Hi everyone, welcome to Anu's classroom. We are continuing with MMPC 5 playlist that is quantitative analysis for managerial applications and in this video we are talking about unit number 11 that is testing of hypothesis. Uh, by the end of this video, I hope that you will be able to understand the meaning of statistical hypothesis, absorb on the concept of null hypothesis, uh, understand the importance and significance of the p-value and significance level, learn the steps involved in conducting a test of hypothesis and perform tests that are concerning population mean, population proportion, what is the difference between this population means and two population proportions and all such things. And therefore, we'll be talking about some of the basic concepts that are involved in testing of hypothesis, the testing hypothesis testing procedure and uh, such things. So without get, uh, wasting much time, let's get started. A quick uh, thumbs up or a quick tip on this unit. This is very important. Um, so naturally, we are learning MMPC 5. This is important for your first semester term and examination. Uh, but from the term and examination point of view, uh, naturally, you will not have any, say, practical questions from this. You will have maximum uh, maybe a theory question that is uh, rarely essay questions. Um, most probably short answer questions only but uh, when you uh, go for the practical okay the research and in the practical sense as in if you are a manager or if you are an entrepreneur when you start doing the business at that time this concept will become very important this whole testing of hypothesis concept will become very important and at the same time uh, while you are in your third semester while you are going to do your projects it becomes crucial so in your third semester there is a paper called research methodology i don't remember the exact name but there is some paper called research methodology mmpc 15. so that subject uh, is actually kind of like a continuation of this mmpc 5 and uh, be it whichever university if you are an mba student uh, then you will have to go and prepare a project even phd students will have to prepare their thesis and at that time uh, this concept that we are learning this uh, be it sampling methods sampling distribution or this testing of hypothesis and the things that we are going to learn regression correlation and chi squared tests uh, forecasting uh, all these things become important at that point of time and mmpc5 just tries to give you an overview of all these concepts okay so let's get started i've uh, i think i've given you a gist of the importance of this what is hypothesis a hypothesis um, is some kind of a statement okay about a population which you are trying to study okay about a population's parameter okay or about a population distribution as it simply put it is an assumption okay like for example if you are studying the uh, let's say an example of on whether the number of hours a student puts into study okay the study time in hours whether it is related to marks okay so at that time you will formulate a hypothesis the first hypothesis will be that there is no uh, there is no relation between study time and marks therefore we don't have to change our study pattern or we don't have to increase or, or make any change in our study routine if we are to get more marks because there is no uh, relation the next hypothesis okay the opposite of that will be that yes there is a relation and if we are to increase our marks then we have to increase our time of study so the first hypothesis where we said that there is no relation and therefore we don't have to change our study time in order to get in order to find have a change in the marks is called a null hypothesis and the opposite is the alternate hypothesis so the null hypothesis okay is uh, what you can say um, basically it is null that is the if we prove that the null hypothesis is true okay that the null assumption is true then uh, the we will ha not have to change anything on uh, our present pattern okay like if you are uh, let's take another example okay you are a, um, let's say a procurement manager or if you are a, in the civil okay you are um, a civil engineer and um, let's say you are uh, in charge of create constructing a building okay and you have always been uh, getting your steel pipes uh, or uh, you know the steel rods for creating the structure from say a particular vendor okay and now there comes a new vendor who with a new product uh, with, a, uh, with their steel rod and they are saying that we have much better strength okay compared to the uh, your other vendors in the market now naturally 
you have to decide okay so they are not going to give you the entire batch of steel rods for you to test and see whether it is good enough for you they'll give you maybe a sample of maybe five or ten rods or maybe one one uh, bunch of rods okay and you have to prepare your uh, you have to do your tests on it, that that sample and you have to decide whether to change your vendor or not okay so now what you will do is you will have to first create two hypotheses one that this strength is not different okay the and therefore if that is null hypothesis and if that null hypothesis is true then you need not change your method next is that yes there is a strength difference and in that case you might consider changing your method that is your alternate hypothesis so the null hypothesis is usually denoted as h0 and alternate hypothesis is represented as h1 so always there is a pair of null and alternate hypothesis okay so now testing a hypothesis is actually uh, what you can say you are trying to test your assumption and see whether we should accept our null hypothesis or we can reject it okay so if there is enough evidence after testing the hypothesis with the sample we have enough evidence to uh, against our null hypothesis means we will reject it and how do we decide how much evidence is enough is using something called as a significance level okay of our p value okay so and by default the naturally we uh, don't like change okay naturally our tendency is to reject or resist change if we are set in one space if we are set in one particular job until and unless there is that much of an external pressure coming in we won't be thinking of changing our job or be it anything so naturally all researchers are biased towards null hypothesis because it means that they do not have to change anything uh, but if there is strong enough evidence then only uh, we reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternate hypothesis in which case we will have to make changes right so that is testing of hypothesis now while we are testing hypothesis uh, there are possibilities of two types of errors which we nickname as type 1 and type 2 errors now how we define on the type 1 and type 2 is type 1 is also called the false positive errors and type 2 is the false negative errors okay so we have two condition we have two hypothesis okay and therefore we have two choices either accept the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis okay so and now while we are accepting or rejecting there is another uh, side to the coin that is our null hypothesis may actually be true or the null hypothesis may actually be false now if we are rejecting a false null hypothesis that is correct if we are accepting a true hypo null hypothesis that is also correct but now if we are rejecting the true hypothesis okay actually the hypothesis is true but we rejected it that is type 1 error next if our hypothesis was actually false but we accepted it then that becomes our type 2 error now rejecting a null uh, rejecting a true hypothesis is often more severe than accepting a false one okay so therefore type 1 error is much more severe than type 2 error but uh, as a good practice we should try to maintain both of these errors the minimum possible okay as minimum as possible but these have an inverse relationship and if you are considering the whole population then there will not be any type 1 or type 2 error the reason why there is type 1 and type 2 error is because we are not doing a census but a sampling okay we are trying to infer or create a big picture of the whole population by just looking at a few samples only and that is the reason why this type 1 and type 2 errors come okay and if you are trying to minimize your type 1 error your type 2 error probability will go up and vice versa so what we have to do is we have to find a balance between these two errors okay so how we do all these things and what exactly is the procedure that is undertaken and all is actually uh, has been kept out of scope of our study materials and even term and examination but it is very crucial for us to you know learn about it and all if you are interested in going in depth on all these concepts related to sampling and forecasting and uh, testing of hypothesis and all let me know in the comment section below if i get enough responses then definitely i'll consider making a series out of it Coming to the next important concept while we are learning on testing of hypothesis is the significance level. What is significance level? The significance level of an event, okay, is the probability that this event could have occurred by chance or not, okay. Suppose I am taking a grape from the whole bunch, okay. Maybe the grape which I took is an outlier and it might turn out to be sour. Now the significance level states is 
what it states is it states the level or the what you can say yeah the percentage or a benchmark value on uh, which uh, tries uh, which helps us understand whether the me picking a sour grape that is the outlier okay uh, of all this uh, actually sweet grapes bunch is something which happened purely by chance or not now the thing is if we are just able to uh, you know pick up one sample or maybe two samples now first sample i took i got an outlier it is sour i took one more sample and now i am getting sweet now if the guy is saying if the vendor is saying that this is actually a sweet grapes bunch and he is not giving willing to give you any more samples then how would you decide which is whether he is true whether he is actually saying the right thing or wrong okay so that is the whole idea behind significance level if the significance level is quite low then probability of this uh, what you can say occurring by chance is also quite small okay and therefore us getting the sour grape will be highly significant event and we have to deduce that this guy is lying this is actually not a sweet grape sponge okay so in all tests of hypothesis this type 1 error as we said is more serious than type 2 error so um how we set as we said earlier we have to find a balance between this type 1 and type 2 error how we do that is by adjusting our significance level so for uh, as per the scope of mmpc5 this is all that you need to understand about significance level and uh, you know adjusting your type 1 and type 2 errors okay now the next important topic that we have to learn over here is the power curve of a test power curves are uh, simply put line plots that show how change in variables uh, like effect of size and sample size and all impact the power of a statistical test now the power of a test is the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false and the p value of a test the p value is a number which is calculated from a statistical test and describes how likely you are to have found a particular set of observations if the null hypothesis were true okay and these p values are used in hypothesis testing to help decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or not the steps that we follow while testing for hypothesis is first and foremost we state our null and alternate hypothesis then we will choose the test statistic okay uh, and we will define the critical region then we will specify the significance level we will define the critical region in times of in terms of the stat test statistic and compare the observed value of the test statistic with the cutoff value okay or the critical value and we will decide whether or to accept or reject the null hypothesis now to test the population mean we have z test and t test z tests are a statistical way of testing a hypothesis when either we know the population variance or we have a very large sample size okay z test is uh, also called as the normal test or the standard test and it assumes that our uh, what you can say distribution is normal now if we have a small sample size then or if we do not know the population variance then we go for a t test okay again t test is also uh, normally dis uh, done on normal distribution uh, sets okay and all data points also should be independent and for each sample the variances must also be equal now testing the population's proportion uh, let us consider parameter say p okay of the population's proportion okay so let's say we might want to consider the proportion of males within a total population of adults okay whenever we are conducting a survey now a test of proportion will assess whether or not a sample from the population represents the true proportion from the entire population so the entire population okay may have 50 uh, 54 percent males assume okay now the test of proportion but we do not know whether it is actually 54 percent or not okay and if we are to draw a sample okay and we are testing its proportion uh, and we, if say uh, maybe the sample will have only 45 percent or maybe the sample may have 50 percent or even the sample may have only 35 percent males in it now when we test for population proportion we are trying to find out whether the samples uh statistic we got okay is uh close enough to our population or is it a true picture of our population's stat, uh, parameter that is what we are trying to test over here using the test of population proportion so how we do that is first we will state our null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis then we will calculate the test statistic okay that is we calculate the z score okay 
and then we will determine the critical region or the significance level and uh, we will compare our test statistic and the critical region and then finally we will make a decision okay so that is how we go for testing the population proportion from the term and examination point of view mmpc5 that is more than enough for you to this much is more than enough for you to learn uh, especially if you are coming from uh, non commerce background or you don't have much idea about all these things i know it will become quite difficult even uh, with me uh, actually coming from a science background i had done btech before this uh, so when i was doing my mb it was actually quite difficult for me to wrap up my head uh, around all these things i actually had to go and do an extensive digging i still am in order to you know when i'm teaching you uh, when i'm trying you know creating this video at that time i'm still learning more and more about this whole concept of uh, research and uh, this data analysis even for my, uh, my work purpose also professionally also when i uh, you know as an as a uh, you know scenarios come up i'm le still learning so this is actually a quite vast area for us to wrap our head around especially this data analytics part of quantitative techniques or quantitative methods uh, but it is a very interesting uh, thing also so if you are looking for out for the solely for uh, from the term and first pers perspective okay this is more than enough for you to know especially in your first semester but i would suggest you you know dig deep and try to understand or try to read as much as possible on these concepts and if you are interested then uh, definitely i'll try uh, i'll consider making a whole video on the hands on aspect of this maybe we will also learn how to use a tool like power bi or maybe data eco or something like that um, excel is also a good uh, tool but excel is quite limited i would say or maybe spss ibms spss or some tool like that let me see which uh, would be the best tool from you know Uh, from all perspectives like as uh, accessibility and things like that also i'll see about it if you are interested uh, let me know in the comments i will make a separate video out of you know the proper data analytics part okay uh, which is out of your term and examination or your igno scope it has a which has a universal scope i'll try to create a uh, playlist for that i'll create try to create a course on that if you guys are interested okay so coming back testing for differences between means Many times, what happens is that the decision maker is interested in knowing whether two related populations are actually different from each other in respect of any parameter of the population. Now, uh, in these cases, the decision maker actually is not interested in con in concluding anything about the parameter value, but only whether whether the difference is significant or not. Like, for example, uh, consider the height. Okay, are the heights of males in Trishur and say. Uh, um code code different okay these are two districts in kerala okay or maybe are the heights of people in delhi different from that of kolkata okay that is all that we need to know whether the difference in the average height is significantly vast or uh, negligible that is all that if that is all that we need to know then what we will do is we will go for testing uh, of differences between means okay now uh, we have two types of test for independent samples as well as dependent samples but if it is a small sample means we will go for t test if it is a large sample means we will go for a z test okay again here also the basic assumption is that our distribution is a normal distribution and in the when since we are talking about heights of people then yes that's uh, height age blood pressure all these things uh, are normally distributed data only okay so that is testing the difference between means now testing for difference between proportion again here we are trying to compare two proportions similar to comparing two means okay and so a hypothesis test can actually determine if the difference in the estimated proportions actually reflect a difference in the population's proportion also again here also depending upon whether the samples are independent or dependent we have different tests whether this if the sample size is small then we go for t test if the sample size is large then we go for z test okay so in case you need these pdps uh, this pdf i will put the link to the telegram channel uh, where you can go and download these materials for free okay and in case you like uh, my videos in case you like the content that is being provided in anand's classroom consider subscribing if you have not yet and uh, consider sharing about us to your friend circle and help us grow our community and uh, so that we can all help each other and uh, learn better and uh, be better employable graduates of tomorrow all right so thank you very much for sticking around and until i see you in the next video bye bye